Welcome to the Embryology Laboratory at Reproductive Medicine Associates of New York. This video will give you a brief tour of our laboratory and an introduction to some of the procedures performed for your IVF cycle. We'll show you an egg retrieval and insemination, an evaluation of egg fertilization, daily assessments of embryo development, and the embryo transfer procedure. We'll also show you some special procedures, including intracytoplasmic sperm injection, trophectoderm biopsy, and embryo freezing. Let's begin by showing you how sperm, eggs, and embryos are labeled and easily identified while being cultured in our laboratory. The incubator containing your specimens has a printed, color-coded label with at least two unique patient identifiers for you and your partner or sperm donor. These may include your name, social security number, or date of birth. This incubator contains a culture dish for patient Jane Doe, seen here on the incubator shelf, directly behind the patient-specific label placed on the inner glass door. In order to perform a procedure, your culture dishes must be carefully removed from the incubator. The dishes are identified and witnessed by two embryologists who verify that all unique identifiers match before proceeding with any procedure. You can see in the culture dishes shown here the individual drops of pinkish media in which your embryos are cultured placed precisely around the dish. The culture media is highly specialized for each stage of embryo development. The first procedure most patients undergo is an egg retrieval. After your identity is verified by an embryologist, a reproductive endocrinologist aspirates the fluid contained in each of your ovarian follicles. The follicular fluid is collected in a pre-warmed test tube. The test tube is brought into the embryology lab where an embryologist pours the fluid into a dish located on a warm surface and then searches through the fluid to locate the eggs. The eggs are retrieved, are washed by pipetting them repeatedly through clean culture media. You can see a single egg being pipetted here. The egg itself can be identified as a small dark circle surrounded by the translucent supportive cumulus cells. Once all the eggs have been retrieved and thoroughly washed, each egg will have some of the surrounding cumulus cells carefully dissected off to further prepare the egg for culture in a micro environment. After some of the cumulus is dissected off the eggs, the eggs are gathered together and maturity of the eggs is assessed. Once all dishes have been witnessed by two embryologists, the eggs are moved from a temporary retrieval dish into a culture dish where a few eggs will be cultured together in each media drop. At the conclusion of the retrieval procedure, the final number of eggs retrieved is recorded and the dish is returned to the incubator where it will remain until the time of insemination. If the sperm concentration and motility are deemed adequate, a conventional insemination is typically performed. An insemination is called conventional when sperm are placed next to an egg and the sperm are allowed to penetrate the egg on their own. The first step of a conventional insemination is to have two embryologists witness the test tube containing the processed sperm specimen and the culture dish containing the eggs. The unique patient identification information must be verified by both embryologists before a precise concentration of sperm is placed into each media drop in the culture dish. Here you can see a drop containing a few eggs which were just inseminated and thousands of sperm swimming around them, each sperm trying to reach an egg. On day one, fertilization is assessed. All eggs determined to be normally fertilized are moved into new culture dishes, but only after two embryologists have verified that the patient identification information matches. Any cumulus cells that are still surrounding the eggs are removed at this time by gentle pipetting so the cells do not obscure visualization of the eggs. Fertilization is determined based on the number of polar bodies and pronuclei visible. The eggs shown here each have two pronuclei visible in the cytoplasm, which means they've normally fertilized, having received both maternal and paternal genetic material. On the third day after retrieval, embryos are placed on a high magnification microscope where they're assessed for cell division. At this point, the embryos typically range from six to eight cells. Along with the number of cells in each embryo, other factors including the degree of fragmentation and evenness of the cells are analyzed. 
these findings are documented and any embryos that are considered to still be viable and developing are cultured onto the blastocyst stage. Now known as blastocysts, the embryo's development will be assessed on day five and day six and will either be cryopreserved or transferred for implantation. They can range in qualities characterized by their size and the organization of cells that are beginning to differentiate around the fluid-filled blastocyl cavity. On day five or day six, depending on each individual case, a transfer may be performed to replace embryos. After you have filled your bladder and had a discussion with the physician about how many embryos will be transferred, you will be brought into the operating room and an embryologist will verify your identity. The embryologist will then load the catheter, a long, thin, flexible straw with the embryos and hand the catheter to the physician. The physician will then guide the catheter into the uterus using ultrasound visualization. You can see the catheter on the top right side of the screen, making its way into the uterus, which is on the top left. The embryos are then deposited and the catheter removed and checked to make sure all the embryos were placed in the uterus. For various reasons, certain special procedures may be performed. One special procedure is intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. This procedure is performed by highly skilled embryologists and involves a selection of an individual sperm to be injected into each mature egg. Before this procedure begins, the embryologists once again carefully verify and confirm all patient-specific identifiers on the sperm and the eggs. Using a microscopic needle, an individual sperm is selected and immobilized. The sperm is then picked up inside the needle and after alignment of the egg on a holding pipette on the left side, the needle is carefully inserted into the egg and a single sperm is deposited. This technique is performed at 400 times magnification and you can just see the sperm head in the end of the needle before it is inserted. The egg recovers from this injection and is placed into a culture dish overnight so that fertilization can be assessed the next day. If an embryo is going to have a trophectoderm biopsy, the embryo may be hatched on day three. This process, called assisted hatching, uses a laser to make a small opening in the zona pellucida, which is the outer shell around the embryo. On day five or day six, the embryos are moved from the culture dish to a special dish made for the biopsy procedure. The dish is then moved to the micromanipulation station where a highly skilled embryologist will hold the embryo with a holding pipette on the left, aspirate cells with a biopsy pipette on the right, and use a foot activated laser to assist in separating the cells to be analyzed from the embryo. The biopsied embryos are then moved to a dish in preparation for cryopreservation or an embryo transfer the following day. Good quality embryos may be frozen and stored for years. We vitrify embryos, which freezes the embryos in a glass solid state to avoid damage from ice crystallization. The devices in which the embryos are vitrified, as well as the culture dish, are both witnessed by two embryologists as the first step in this procedure. The embryos are then moved from the culture dish onto vitrification devices for frozen storage. The devices are stored in liquid nitrogen, held in dewars at about negative 196 degrees Celsius. And each patient's embryos have their own location within a dewar where the embryos will remain vitrified. In addition to preserving embryos, patients seeking to delay childbirth are offered the option of freezing eggs or oocytes. The patient will undergo a retrieval procedure as previously described, and shortly following this, her mature eggs will be frozen using the vitrification method. Two embryologists witness all dishes and devices used to vitrify eggs to ensure the identity of the gametes. After witnessing, the eggs will be moved through a series of solutions that will remove water from the eggs and add a cryoprotectant to replace the volume of removed water, which protects the eggs during the vitrification procedure. The eggs are loaded onto a vitrification device in a very small volume of media and the device is plunged directly into liquid nitrogen, rapidly vitrifying the eggs for safe storage. Each patient's eggs have their own location within a dewar where the eggs will remain until the patient has decided to proceed with thawing and implantation into the uterus in order to achieve a pregnancy. 
We hope you have enjoyed this tour of our laboratory. The embryologists at RMA of New York take great pride in every procedure, and we hope this video helps you understand the care they put forth in helping you achieve your dreams. Thank you.